okay, I'll be honest with you, I do think this actually worked better than the After Effects version. The tracking is super solid. In fact, the tracking is better. <laughs> EBSynth is a free AI software that allows you to add effects to just one frame of your video and then it applies it to the entire clip. So I'm going to be testing out three different shots where I will first edit them in After Effects giving myself only 20 minutes and then compare them to the quick and easy AI version. So I'm in After Effects and I have this nice shot of my niece but there's this water bottle in the bottom left corner that needs to be removed. To remove this bottle the first thing I'll do is I'll just create a mask around the bottle. I'm going to set the mask to none and then select the stopwatch here for the mask path and then just keyframe frame the mask through the entire shot and I'm going to add a little bit of feather to our mask and then set the mask to subtract. Now we're going to use the content aware fill tool with an after effect and then first we are going to generate a reference frame. So in a reference frame I just want to take the lasso tool and just go around where we masked out the bottle there. Go to edit fill. So now we have a reference frame as you can see it's updated in after effects and now I'm going to hit generate fill layer. So here's our After Effects edit of removing that water bottle right here, which uh, looks pretty good. I don't think any uh, regular viewer would even notice. And now we look at the AI version. It's actually not bad at all. And that was only that, that right there was probably only like five minutes total of edit, editing. So round one, I give it a tie. I'll say that's a tie. Okay, so for our second editing scenario, we're going to want to track uh, a NASA logo uh, right here on this woman's helmet. We're gonna jump into Mocha and then I'm going to use Mocha to get tracking data of those uh, little bolts on the side of her helmet and we'll see if that will be good enough to get a decent track. Um, it looks like, I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks like it can be usable, so let's go ahead and save. All right, let's bring our NASA logo onto the actress's helmet. All right, so let's see how this track went. Um, it's pretty good. Obviously, it goes off her helmet. We're going to adjust that with keyframes. Um, looks pretty decent. So my guess for the AI version on this one is that it's going to have distortion again. Um, but I'm interested to see how well it actually sticks with uh, her helmet. So here we go. You can see it's already a little bit distorted there, but let's check it out. We got really weird at the end there. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest with you. I do think this actually worked better than the After Effects version. The After Effects version, there's a little bit of like wiggling going on on the helmet. But if we go to the AI version, even though it looks, you know, super distorted, super wonky, the logo does not wiggle at all. It's like where it's supposed to be the entire time. But round four has got to go to After Effects. But before we move on, let's go over the verse of the day, which comes again from Proverbs, but this time Proverbs 16. And we read, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord determines his steps. Take that into account. But now let's apply this next verse to it. Commit your activities to the Lord and your plans will be achieved. So that means I guess that I can just dream of whatever I want to do and just pray to God and he's going to do it for me, right? No, wrong. Because if we go to another verse, it says all of man's ways seem right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the motives. If your motives are just to get items and gifts and, and pleasures and blessings in this lifetime, then your motives probably aren't that good, right? It reminds me of the verse, I think it's in James, where it says like, you know, you pray and you don't receive because you don't, you don't ask for the right stuff. You don't pray with the right attitude. So dwell on that. What does it truly mean to commit your activities to the Lord? So in a third scenario, which I have this drone shot that I got in Yosemite, and I'm just going to add some cool stuff to the horizon, maybe some stuff in the grass right here. So I'm gonna first start out by just uh, creating a 3D camera. All right, so we got our shot solved. I'm going to go ahead and just create a camera. And now let's go ahead and start adding some mountains into the background. I got this photo right here. All right, now let's go ahead and make this a 3D object. So now I just need to cut out the sky here um, so I can place the mountains behind all the other mountains we see here. So let me go to effect on our uh, main uh, drone footage, go to keying, extract, and then I'm going to bring the white point down to just remove the sky. Let's move the mountains behind, and then let's duplicate our footage as well, and then bring the duplicated one on the very bottom, and then delete the extract. So now I need to just get rid of these holes in the mountain here, which the easiest way to do that is just to select our image, and then create another mask where we're just going to um, cut out 
uh, the parts where it's going through the mountain there. So now I'm going to color correct this mountain. I wanted to add some stuff in the field here, so let's try to do that real fast. Uh, I have a um, vehicle here. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing I'll do, since I'm just about out of time here, is just gonna add some noise to all the images that I've added in to give it uh, a better look that it just doesn't look like photos that are um, put onto a video. I mean, it looks solid. After Effects has a great you know, 3D camera uh, system within it. My guess for the AI version is that it's gonna be pixelated, but I'm just curious of how well, again, it just tracks through motion. After the helmet example, I think it's actually gonna track really well in the shot. All right, so we, this is our first frame, and it's already, again, very pixelated. But if we play through here, the tracking is super solid. In fact, the tracking is better. Like, look at the car. That tracking is better than the After Effects version, no doubt. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date. I will see you in the next one, and God bless. So final thoughts on this whole thing was that very impressed with the ability for the AI software to track the images that I put on the, the one frame throughout the entire shot perfectly. You know, you have that pixelation, you have that uh, that wiggleness, wiggliness, I don't know what word really to use there, but you know, the software isn't made to track, it's made to actually bring your paintings to life, and that's why I get that that wonkiness to, to the image that I put in there. But it tracked it so well, it just makes me think, why can't After Effects have a system like this? And maybe they are working on that. You know, you have Adobe Firefly, uh, which is, you know, their AI systems, and they're pushing a lot of AI, so why can't they have, uh, why can't they have a, a system that's like, I just put an image on the screen, process it, it tracks it all the way through just as uh, EB Synth did. And then I also have the tracking information to adjust afterwards. I don't know, because right now uh, After Effects has good tracking systems within Mocha and then their 3D camera, but there's still a lot of adjusting that needs to be done. And if you don't have tracking points, it makes it even harder. Like, you know, one time I was filming at the ocean and there's no tracking points. Very difficult. I guarantee you the EB Synth would have no problem with that. So, so that would be a game changer in my mind within After Effects.